chapter 6 over this next five minutes and play something soft and sweet. And let's just meditate, and then we're going to get right into our lesson tonight. God bless you guys who are tuning in, watching us. If you have a Bible uh, or a uh, smartphone or uh, your, your family Bible at home, open it up. Matthew chapter 6. Yes. Those of you who are here, open it up chapter 6. We're just going to play some soft music and just read that, and then we'll come back and talk about it in our study. God bless you. Thank you all, you all for being here tonight. Praise the Lord. What we just did was actually an example of what we should do in our private time mm -hmm. every single day. So rather than just talk about it, I wanted to actually activate it tonight and have you exercise it every day. That song we played, um, it's about three and a half minutes. It seemed longer than that because you're reading your Bible. When you're reading your Bible, it's easy to fall asleep. When you're reading the Bible, time slows down. So you can say, listen, I'm going to um, sit down. I'm going to read my Bible for half an hour. In three minutes, you'll be like, dang, it's only been three minutes? Because the enemy does not want you to be excited about the contents. Mm -hmm. So he makes you tired, makes you sleepy. But I'm going to tell you, our victory 
It's yes. in this yes, word. Yes. Everybody say victory. Victory. Is in the word. It's in the word. And I have the word. And I have the word. Uh, go over to Joshua, Joshua 1 and 28. Joshua 1 and 28. Got four scriptures and then we're going to chat. Joshua 1 and 28. I'm sorry, um, Joshua um, 2. No, I'm looking for, um, no, I'm sorry. Psalms 1 is what I want. Psalms 1. Psalms 1. 1 through 3. Okay. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the word of the Lord, and in his word doth he meditate day and night. Listen mm -hmm. up. And he shall be like a tree mm -hmm. that is planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. Now, if we look at that in the message translation, how well God must like you. You don't hang out in sin saloon. You don't slink along dead end road, and you don't go to smart mouth college. <laughs> Instead, you thrill to God's word. You chew on that scripture day and night. You're a tree replanted in Eden, bearing fresh fruit every month, never dropping a leaf, always in blossom. Isn't that good? Yes. So the Bible is telling us that our victory is in the word, and mm -hmm. when you meditate on the word mm -hmm. on a daily basis, like mm -hmm. we did starting out tonight, Spending three or four minutes, mm -hmm. just you and God and your Bible. Nobody's tell, trying to tell you what to think. Nobody's trying to tell you what to do. It's you and God with a scripture. When you're reading that scripture and medi meditating on the word, the Bible tells us that you'll be like a tree right? that is planted Anchor. next to a lake. Yep. If you've ever been to Percy Priest or Old Hickory Lake, our two lakes here or um, mm -hmm. a, 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 a river, Tennessee River. Mm -hmm. The trees that are close to the lake mm -hmm. are always far more greener. Absolutely. And uh, they, they grow tall because mm -hmm. their roots grow down deeper mm -hmm. because they have access to mm -hmm. the water, mm -hmm. which gives them strength. Mm -hmm. So the Bible says that if you meditate on the word, you'll be like a tree that's planted right. by Anchored. a river. Anchored. And so you 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 have more access mm -hmm. to, to to that water or that that nutrition. Mm -hmm. The Bible always uses examples of the water mm -hmm. to show power. Mm -hmm. Rivers of living waters, mm -hmm. uh, the Red Sea. Everything mm -hmm. that you saw in the Bible regarding water always was mm -hmm. one of power. Mm -hmm. And so he said that you would be like a tree planted next to him mm -hmm. if you meditate on the word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and there was nothing that was made without the word. And so you cannot navigate through our trying times right now, this virus included. I don't want to just talk about the virus all the time, though. But any challenge, you cannot just navigate through life looking for one statement from somebody to make you feel better. Your victory is not going to be mm -hmm. from finding that one statement or that one slogan or that one post or that one person, your stability is going to be in your daily commitment yeah. to the word of God. Yeah. Many of you are in the financial realm. If you are a trader, uh, it, it is suggested that you spend at least 15 to, to 30 minutes a day in trading. It won't trade itself. you got to be a part of it. When we was in school, how many remember when we when we was in school when we took up algebra or geometry or any one of trigonometry 
and you miss one day of class <laughs> or two. You come back and you're like, what the heck happened? What's going on? It's almost like you never was in class. Mm -hmm. So much happens just mm -hmm. in one day. Mm -hmm. So what, what would it be like if you're away from the word a whole week between mm -hmm. Sundays? Mm -hmm. If the preacher telling <laughs> you to turn to a scripture is the only time you turn there, mm -hmm. look how many algorithms mm -hmm. you missed. Mm -hmm. Look how many formulas you missed during mm -hmm. the week. So we need to get back into that word daily basis. And you can start with, make it 5, 10, 15 minutes. We just mm -hmm. did three minutes. Mm -hmm. And it felt like it was longer than three minutes. Mm -hmm. So that's what we want to talk about mm -hmm. tonight, meditating on the word. One more scripture, John 10, 10. John 10, 10. This is what my book, The Full Tank Life, is based on. John 10, 10. Y'all remember I, I preached a whole couple months on the full tank life. Amen. John 10, 10. Remember we said that Jesus said, the thief cometh not mm -hmm. but to steal, kill, mm -hmm. and destroy. Let's look at that. The thief cometh mm -hmm. not. In other words, He's not coming unless he's coming for three things. Absolutely. That's it. He cometh not but yep. to kill, mm -hmm. steal, mm -hmm. and destroy. But I have come mm -hmm. that you might have life and life more abundantly. Mm -hmm. One translation says life to the full yeah. till it overflows. Yeah. Yeah. You ever been filling up a glass of water? You weren't paying attention? and it overflowed on you, mm -hmm. that's how your life's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. that your life's supposed to be overflowing yes. even when you're not paying attention yes, to it. Yes, 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 yes. Even when you're not paying attention to it. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't have to be sitting up confessing full time, looking at life. Uh, you should be able to just meditate on the word and go about your business. Mm -hmm. And while you're not even thinking about yes. it, it's overflowing. Yes, yes. <laughs> Things are happening. Hallelujah. Um, um, while we end the New Testament, go to... Uh, Matthew 6 and 25, and I'll I kick it over to Jewel. I know I've been long-winded, but y'all didn't see me Sunday, so I got to catch up. <laughs> Good. Great service Sunday. Thank y'all for being here. And did not mm -hmm. Dr. Jewel bring an awesome word? Amen. Amen. I thank God that I got a sweet, kind wife, but she can be a thug with the devil. She can. She from Detroit. She'll pull a knife on the devil. Matthew 6 and 25. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat mm -hmm. or what you shall drink, mm -hmm. nor yet for your body, what you shall put on is not life more than meat mm -hmm. and the body more raiment. Mm -hmm. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap nor gather into barns, yep. yet your heavenly Father, Father feeds yeah. them. Are you not better than them? Good. Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit to your stature? Mm -hmm. And why take thought for raiment? Mm -hmm. Consider the lilies of the field, mm -hmm. how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon yeah. in all his glory is not as arrayed as one of yeah. these. Yeah. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, mm -hmm. O ye of little faith? Good. Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? What shall we drink? How shall we be clothed? Mm -hmm. For all of these things the Gentiles seek, of the world seeks. Mm -hmm. For your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. Mm -hmm. But seek ye first the kingdom of God, Hard. his righteousness, Hard. and all these things shall be added unto yeah. you. Take therefore no thought for the tomorrow, for tomorrow mm -hmm. shall take thought for thy, its own self. Sufficient today is the evil thereof. In other words, mm -hmm. I like the scripture, um, up earlier said, um, take no thought.
thought, saying, verse 31. Read that with me. Therefore, take, take no, no thought, thought saying, saying what good. shall we eat? That's good. Take That's no good. thought saying. Yeah. Because it would be facetious or unreasonable to think that if you have a job, if you have a career, if you have a family, don't ever think about it, Shalanda. Don't ever think about what you're going to eat. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing you think about. You call, honey, what you want to eat tonight? <laughs> <laughs> honey, what you, take out some salmon, honey. I mean, that, that's just natural. Or, mm -hmm. or where you going to work, Brian? Or what you going to make this, this year, Sister mm -hmm. Sean? Uh, uh, um, what are we going to do, Andrew? I mean, what's, what's your goal? What's your, I mean, we, we know that we, we are going to be thinking mm -hmm. about our upkeep. Mm -hmm. But this scripture means take no thought saying, what I think it's saying is take no thought saying in worry what's going to happen. Right. That's so good. when you speak it out, yeah. you give it flight. Yeah. That's and it. what you That's speak it. out, yep. you believe. Yep. You may not speak it when you say it, yep. but once it gets into the atmosphere, it multiplies. Yep. And it boomerangs back to your mind yep. space. So you yep. got to be very, very careful what you say all the time because mm -hmm. even if you don't believe it when you said it, when it comes back, you're going to believe it. Absolutely. A smile is a smile that comes mm -hmm. back. Everything multiplies. A mm -hmm. frown is a frown that comes back. When you frown at somebody, you don't get just one frown back. <laughs> you get frown from them, their cousin, because they're going to tell somebody that you frown at them. You will always get something multiplied back that you sent out. Mm -hmm. When you smile to a group, you're going to get more than one smile back. Mm -hmm. Your harvest is going to be bigger coming mm -hmm. back than what you sent out there. Mm -hmm. So if you say, I don't know how I'm going to survive. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen. Then listen, mm -mm. post your faith. Don't post your fear. You That's get what you post. That's it. You get what you That's post. It. So make sure you're posting your faith and not your fear. That's good. Amen. Amen. And that was the introduction. Mm -hmm. That's so good. Don't post it. Don't say it. Don't say it. You don't have to talk about it. Talk about faith. Talk about testimonies. Talk about what the Lord did. Talk about what the God of Moses did. I mean, goodness gracious. Every time I think of that story, I get stirred up. He fights with Pharaoh back and forth because this was going on through their whole country. I mean, he had all these people oppressed and um, God gives him a word and he says, you know, okay, you, I'm going to let your people go. And then, you know, Moses is probably like, I feel like you punking me. You tell me I go back and I tell the people you're going to let them go and then you don't let them go? So then they're mumbling and complaining and this goes on back and forth, back and forth. Finally, they get free. They get to the Red Sea and they're like, where are we going now? What, Lord, really? <laughs> I can imagine. He's saying, Lord, really? And he tells, he tells, Moses, tells Moses, lift up your staff. What is that going to do? I mean, imagine Moses is like, what is that going to do? What is lifting up my staff going to do, Lord? What does this look like? All these people are here. There's a whole nation of people here. The enemy is right on our tail. What are you going to do? And literally we saw a miracle. He parted that sea. So even though, I mean, because you got to imagine this back and forth with Pharaoh was causing probably lots of drama <laughs> among the people. They were probably like, Moses said that he was going to let us go, and he didn't let us go. What is going on? Da -da 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 -da. And one conversation led to another, and then Moses is bannering back and forth with the Lord. You told me to go do this. Lord, I don't even want to do this. Like, Lord, why do you even have me here? But we see this, mo this miraculous power show up. And I'm like, God, this is the same God that parted the Red Sea. I mean, think about it. Esther didn't know what she was getting into. She just goes to the palace. She thinks she's going to marry this king. Okay, maybe I'll pray for him. She doesn't realize, whoa, Haman, the enemy has a plan to kill them all. He has a plan to kill them all. And she's like, well, what am I supposed to do now? <laughs> and she's talking to Mordecai. And Mordecai's saying, well, you better do what you were trained to do. You better start praying and fasting. And we'll get some people to pray and fast with you. And that's what they did. And they started praying and fasting. And she said, I mean, she was taking some risks. She knew if she went to the king, that he could have had her killed. He said, I, he said, I got to go. She said, because a whole nation is on the line. So Esther didn't have time to just go, you know, she, and, he, and there's this quick exchange in Esther where, you know, 
Mordecai tells her, like, if you think you're going to hide because the king doesn't know you're a Jew, it's just a matter of time before you'll be doomed too. So you better take your position on the wall. And that's what she did, and we saw a whole nation was saved from it. And so there are times like these where the Lord is teaching us, don't consider any kind of calamity. It's not up for discussion. It's not, I don't consider lack. I don't consider sickness. You know, people, of course, because there's so much chatter, people ask, ask us all the time, go da 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 And we just say we're not participating. And they'll look like, what do you mean? <laughs> like, I'm not participating in the virus. I'm not participating in lack and reports and da-da-da-da. I'm not participating. Because God gave us that authority and he told Abraham, do you think Abraham would have really been able to have that baby? If he would have stopped and thought about at 100 years old, wow. And so in Revelation, he tells us that we overcome by the word of our testimony. That's how we overcome. We don't overcome. You have to give the news a small, you know, you may need to give it a small portion, very, very small portion of your day. But the other part, it has to be building yourself up so that you can develop. See, because there are different levels of faith. And right now, this is a great opportunity for all of us to develop bulldog faith. Right, right, right. And, you know, the Bible tells us in First Timothy that God has not given us the spirit of fear. He, he has not us given that. us. So if you have a spirit of fear, it didn't come from God. It didn't come from him. It came from the enemy. Yeah. You need to give him a refund. Yeah. Give him back what he gave you. Fear acronym is false evidence appearing, appearing real. real. That's it. False evidence is appearing real. So if you're in a building, and uh, a crowded building, and they say, he's got a gun. You're more likely to be trampled by the people that are responding to what they heard <laughs> than the gun itself. <laughs> or uh, they say, fire, get out. You know, you, you could die by being trampled instead of being burned to death. So it's not really the issue. Yeah. It's the people responding to the issue right. that sometimes takes you out. Absolutely. And you have to be very careful who you align yourself yes. with. Yes. Uh, fear is very, 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 very uh, powerful because it, it, um, it uses symptoms and evidence and testimonials to justify itself. And so I want to really encourage you to make sure that you are spending enough time like we started tonight yeah. by reading the Bible. Right. Start your day reading the Bible. Right. Spend, put on a song that you know is five minutes long and stay in that word and don't touch your cell phone and don't touch your iPad and don't look at TV for the minutes that you have given yourself yeah. to the length of that song. Absolutely. At least till that song go off. Absolutely. Watch. It'll be hard for some people. It'll be like, oh my God, you're so used to yeah. the notification. You know, and I got to admit, I got, let me admit something. My mama, sweetheart, but woo. She loved them stories. Now you old school if you call soap operas stories. The stories. Hey, y'all sit down somewhere. My story is coming on. Did anybody have a parent that was into the stories? Okay, what was the story? Give me the name of the story. General Hospital, <laughs> Lauren Luke. One life to live. I don't know none of them folks. The Cordomay, uh, who? Cordomay, uh, what's the one? Uh, uh, didn't know that. The one named Cliff, and he got lost in the wild, wild west for like tw 12 years. Um, what else? Who? Young and the Restless. Come on, talk to me, Victor. <laughs> Come on, Victor. <laughs> Victor and Nikki. <laughs> Nikki been young for 90 years. <laughs> She's still a baby, ain't she? Who, what else? As the world turn, I don't know them, none of them folks. An another world. Uh, what about Erica Kane? Come on. Days of Our Lives. Who on there? Who on Days of Our Lives? Who? Who else? Give me some else. The Edge of Night. Come on, you went way back. The Edge of Night. <laughs> the Edge of Night. This is a the Edge of Night. It's like a dark skinned girl with short shorts. All, all my children. Erica King. Come on now. And so I, I can't believe 
Y'all under my mentorship. Y'all go to my church, and ain't nobody said bold and beautiful. <laughs> I bind this. <laughs> I bind this. Because I've been on bold and beautiful since 1986. <laughs> bold and beautiful. You can't mess with Ridge. That's my dog. Ridge is my dog. What's his wife's name? Brett. So how you know? Because uh, we watch it together. We watch it together. I mean, like, me, what they doing? Well, let me tell you what the, my point is. You can get away from your story and be away from your story for five years. Your kid went to college. You got distracted. You mm -hmm. helping them with school. You calling every day, checking on your baby. You ain't watched your story in four or five years. Your, your baby got a graduate degree now. So now you got some time in the nest. You decide, let me get back to my story. You watched one episode, and you totally caught up from all the years that you lost. What's my point? You ain't got to be on that line every day to get the news. You can find one spot in the day and say, listen, I'm about to go carnal for five minutes. Let me log on here and let me listen to all this garbage. Let me read all the filth I want in five minutes, and then it's going to be out, and I'm not coming back for 24 mm -hmm. hours. I promise you, you will not be behind the times. Mm -mm. You'll be caught up, so you don't have to be moved mm -mm. by all this stuff all day, because whatever you focus on grows. So even after you see a report, after, even if you, and that's stuff to say breaking news, you need to stay away from breaking news. Breaking news, might as well say breaking news, you're about to be depressed. Breaking news, mm. you about to be suicidal. Mm. Breaking news, you about to tell somebody mm -hmm. something else that you don't even know is true. Mm -hmm. Come on, talk to me. Now, if mm -hmm. I hear one more person talk about they got out, kinfolk in the Pentagon. <laughs> if, if you got so many kinfolk in the Pentagon, tell them to send you some doggone money. I got kinfolks in the Pentagon, and they said at 1 o'clock this is going to happen, and at 2 o'clock this is going to happen, at 3 <laughs> Don't even read all those forwards. Come on, talk to me. So you need to stay in the Word, and not allow false evidence appearing real to change the character of your Christian walk. Now, we got to listen to our uh, governors. We got to listen to uh, our leaders and stuff. But you don't have to go around spreading stuff, talking about it all day, and run your blood pressure up and find yourself even sick. And you ain't even seen none of this virus, but you still sick. You got the whooping cough, you got asthma, you got hypertension, you got your back to start hurting, your eye done went out. Come on now. Don't allow the enemy to steal, kill, and destroy mm -hmm. your fullness. That's right. You're supposed to be overflowing, so <laughs> act like it. Get into that word and watch God fill you back yes, up. Yes, amen. amen. Amen, that's good. That's so good. Let's go to uh, Hebrews chapter 11. So I want us to remember, what is faith? Faith is what we don't see. Faith is, not, is, is what you don't see. And if we're going to live by what we don't see, we have to study in the word what we see in our spirit before it manifests. Because if you see it, it's probably, it's not faith, right? Because it's already manifested. So if we're all standing against this virus, standing against its impact, right, then we have to see breaking news, the cure is here. And you have to talk about it. And you have to talk about it. I see breaking news. I see the cure is here. I see this thing being over. I see it being over. And you have to keep talking about it and talking about it and talking about it and talking about it and talking about it because of the impact that it has on the different levels. There is always faith. Faith is always relevant because really, as believers, this is a great time for us to practice living above. This is a great time. Listen, we are supposed to establish heaven on earth. So if we're going to establish heaven on earth, I have to be more tuned in with what heaven has to say about this world that I live in than what the news has to say about it. Because whatever you're thinking about is going to frame. So uh, Hebrews 11 and 1, and I want to read that in the um, Amplified translation. If you guys could pull that up on the Amplified in the back, please. Now faith is the assurance. 
So get a vision for what you're believing for in the nations. I got a vision that the nations have been healed. I got a vision of souls being saved. I got a vision for people being turned on for God. I got a vision for mass healings. That's what I think about all day. Think about mass healings. Think about mass revivals. I think about financial revival. I think about signs and wonders. That's what I'm thinking about. The Bible says title deed, confirmation of things hoped for, divinely guaranteed. So wow, that's so good. God, you guaranteed us this healing. You guaranteed us prosperity. You guaranteed us peace. He guaranteed us that. But again, whatever you feed on all the day, listen, all this is working together for our good. This is a great time for the church to arise and everybody dig in on faith. Stay close to the fire. Don't pull back from the fire. Don't pull back and stay isolated. Really, that's the plan of the enemy. Just get you by yourself, get you good and lonely, and just talk junk to you, right? But if you stay around other believers, other people, and what do you do? You talk faith. We talk faith all day long. We just go back and forth in faith, back and forth in faith. I'm we right we are there. developed in it because we exercise it and because we are not concerned with the thoughts of man. When you graduate from being moved by people, ain't no telling where God, God can take you to the front of the line if you don't care about what people are saying. Let's just say, let's give, me a, give you a physical example. And I learned this from Jewel. I wasn't even the one that was doing this. She, she taught me this. I thought I was the face giant. But when we got married, she took me to another level. You know, you're in a traffic jam, and you're trying to get off at, at the exit, and there's a thousand people trying to get off that exit. <laughs> and you can sit in that line for an hour and a half waiting to get off that exit. When I married her, she went all the way to the front and asked to cut over. I'm like, that is so smart. <laughs> Because she wasn't concerned about those people in the car being mad that they quote unquote skipped them. She didn't skip. She asked if they would let her in. Yeah. And so we stayed a whole hour and a half because her fast tail wanted to go all the way to the front and cut over. When I'm sitting back here all polite, about to be an hour and a half late. <laughs> so when you lose that care about what other people are going to yeah. do, you know, I mean, sometimes it work against you because like when you got on the airplane, you know, if you didn't buy no first class ticket, you really ain't supposed to be sitting down in the first class section. <laughs> and y'all know that testimony. You know, with so many times. She said, I'm, go, go ahead, baby, it'll be, it'll be great. I said, no, nah, I'm going back here in third <laughs> class. And if everything work out, I'll come back. <laughs> Several times she had to make the walk of shame <laughs> when she was evicted from a seat that wasn't hers. <laughs> <laughs> but she did it with grace, waving at everybody. You know, she didn't care. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> she didn't. Whatever. <laughs> but when you lose your embarrassment, you can go to a lot of places yeah. when it's impossible for you to be shamed. Well, what will happen is, and this is where you're, you're in, in certain times, your faith circle, and you can love everyone, but your, your faith circle, your conversations, people start getting angry that they don't see more response. So then they say, you're not being responsible. No, I'm being responsible to my faith walk. I'm not going to be responsible they don't with see fear. Much, they don't see enough reaction. They don't see enough reaction. See, the enemy is reactionary. So when he can't get you to, ah, then, he, then he starts to say, well, you're not being responsible. No, I'm being responsible with the word. But at the same time, it's, you can't faith shame anybody, especially in, in the middle of a crisis. You can't, don't. You guys have been around this for a long time. Y'all cool as cucumbers. Y'all in, y'all y'all in Bible study on Wednesday night, and folks sitting up to talk about. I ain't gonna know where it's going to be less than five people. Soon they're gonna say you can't go nowhere with less more than half a person. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot come again with more than half a person. <laughs> but the fact that y'all are here lets me know that you all are, are already uh, past that, that that level. But you have to develop this because, you know, you don't shame faith, faith shame anybody because we don't want your Christian walk to be antagonistic, antagonistic to right. anybody else. Right. 
You need to be blessing people who don't believe like you believe and tell them, listen, you follow your heart, but we got your back no matter where you are. We got your back. We love you. Don't be like, oh, you ain't got no faith. Uh -uh, no, that is not the way to do. Don't faith shame anybody, but at the same, don't um, fear shame anybody. But at the same time, don't allow anybody to faith shame you. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm standing on my faith. You're and you might say faith. I'm irresponsible. You know, I was talking, on my faith. talking to somebody today uh, that was in quarantine. <laughs> um, that was coughing and rebuking me for having service. I'm like, if I'm gonna take, if I'm gonna take advice from somebody, it ain't gonna be somebody that's not doing better than me. You got the hooping cough, and you fall, you you quarantine, and got the hooping cough. And so, <laughs> so they were trying to judge me. I can't believe you having this service and stuff. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? You know. And so I said, you know, if I'm, uh, that's a general rule. I don't like to, t to really take a whole lot of advice from somebody that's not doing better than me. Because I don't re believe rebuke comes from below. Ain't there, can't tell already there how to get there. Unless it's a warning that says don't come over here. Absolutely, absolutely. And th but this is where being led by the spirit, you know, the second part of um, Hebrews 1 and the Amplified, it says, and the evidence of things not seen, so my focus is on what I don't see. My focus is not on what I do see. That's already been established. So people call and say, I feel like you're not talking about it. I don't need to talk about it. It's already there. I'm working on the after. I'm, I, I'm focusing on this is already done. This is temporary. This is not permanent. And so we got to put our faith on where we're going, not where we are, right? He says, faith comprehends as fact what cannot be experienced by the physical senses. So faith is what I don't see, but it's what I believe. So that's why you have to work on your belief more than you work on what you see, because eventually you have to ask yourself, what's going to take over? My belief in the word or what I see externally? That's right. Everybody has to make that decision, and you have to do it every day. That's right. Just like when we're flying an airplane, when we go in the clouds or we're flying at night, and right. we can't see out the windshield, we can no longer fly based on what we see or by the seat of our pants. we got to go with something that's a little more reliable than what yeah. we see. Yeah. And that's always the instrument. Yeah. Now, I can take off in Nashville and land in Memphis and never have to look out the windshield. I can just fly the entire flight yeah. by the instrument. Yeah. If we stay into the word and keep our eyes on the instruments, there is a radar and a navigation system yep. and a GPS system yep. that will guide you to every walk of life yep. where you never have to walk yep. by what you see. Yep. Never. You can walk by the faith. You walk by faith. And you and you remind yourself of that. And that is but it's developed, you know. Yeah. Brother Will has a tremendous <laughs> jump shot. I used to say when he was playing for the uh, Murfreesboro musicians that he was the closest thing to Kobe and the closest thing to Jordan that ever hit Murfreesboro when <laughs> playing ball out there. When he get hot, just give him the ball. It's it's a shame how he, he, he just be demoralizing people. <laughs> just, 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 demoralizing. <laughs> <laughs> but that shot didn't come overnight. Brother Will, when you was developing that shot, how many shots did you have to take a day to get a pure jump shot like you got? A thousand shots wow. a day. You're making a thousand. Wow. So your quota of making to miss, even if it was half, that meant you had to shoot at least 2,000 to make a thousand. Come on, talk to me. So you got to have, you got to have one, one, more than one scripture. Come on. One, more than one minute in the word if you want to be undefeated. Right. If you want to be undefeated, yeah. you want to have a pure shot, you want to be undefeated. shooting threes in your oh, life. That's good. What if, what if you never come to practice, but you just mm. show up at the game, you just got the uniform mm. on? Come on now. Mm. What's happening in between the games? Good. You got to hit, you got to practice. That's so good. Undefeated. And that's where we are. The and now he's teaching his son. How many Absolutely. shots his son taking? His son already a superstar. <laughs> he got his own logo. That's his wife's fault. But he got his own logo, <laughs> t-shirt line, a contract lined up in China, and he ain't in the fourth grade yet. <laughs> no, that's so good, though. 
so intentional. You, it's in, so you tell yourself every day, I'm going to live an undefeated life. Mm -hmm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to live a, an unstoppable life. I'm going to live an undefeated life. It's, it's so funny, and this is why when you go through things like this, you're like, you start limiting what you tell people. I'm leaving for Atlanta, and, um, you know, Pastor Taffy, had, they had to do it because the mayor called the World mm -hmm. Changers office, and uh, they didn't want to do it. I mean, Dr. Dollar was just, mm -hmm. you know. And he said, all right. So she said, you know, you can still come if you want. I said, I want to come. I said, I'm coming. I'm coming. And um, we just encourage each other in the word, encourage each other in faith. And so you have to get around other undefeated players. You have to get around other people that have, like, honestly, what's supposed to happen with believe, believing believers, this is our time. We don't just survive. Mm -hmm. This is our time where we're like, I, I'm so excited. I mean, I'm stirred up because I know that the God, we're undefeated. And I don't care what news reports, I don't care what schools, I don't, I don't care. We serve an undefeated God. So I can be undefeated at 12 o'clock noon on Wednesday. I can be undefeated at 3 o'clock. I can be undefeated at 6 o'clock. But now it's going to be based on what am I feeding on throughout the day. Right, and this is how I want you to think because people are sitting around thinking about loss of salary, loss of wages, mm -mm. loss of promotion, mm -mm. loss mm -mm. of job, and figuring out how they're supposed to replace all that with a thousand dollar food stamp. When really, you should be thinking, this is gonna be the time that my salary doubles. Absolutely. Everything is gonna be 10 this times. This is good. gonna be the time That's that my it. salary That's quadruples. It. That's it. That's it. It's That's gonna be it. in the middle of this crisis That's that it. I become a millionaire. Yes. I don't know how, it ain't none of my yes. business. Yes. But this is the time that God this is gonna turn thing around for me. Yeah. Now listen, if you believe big, you can always get back to doubting and unbelief. <laughs> It'll be there. But the thing about and here's the thing. <laughs> if you start expecting that everything in my life is about to be a hundred times greater. Everything, and you start saying it, and then you start talking about it, and then you start getting excited about it, and then you speak it over, and then you talk to somebody else, and you start talking to people. Even Doc Single just came out two days ago. Well, he had already started training his team on the promotional team, you know, who's like, well, we don't know, you know, if you should release the CD with all of this going on because, no, no, this is the perfect time to release the single. It's the perfect time. I'm expecting for everything to be a hundred times greater. So he got them thinking like the word. And came in number one. Can't. First, First day. day. First day. First day. Mm -hmm. First day. And they called and they were like, oh my gosh, you gotta put your wife on the phone. And they were just going on and on and on. And watercolors picked it up first day and most uh, rotation, added. most added, first day. And I said, that's what we wanna inject in our sons and daughters. This and is this not is the time for you guys. This is a secular, smooth jazz, it's a secular arena. So I am a pastor that comes and enters the chart at the top of the chart above everybody else, and they know I'm a Christian. So the, the world should be looking at Christians and say, yep, those Christians, they're number one again. Absolutely. They're number yeah. one. It's yeah. something about those believers. Yeah. Or maybe I'll start believing like they believe, because yeah. every time they drop a single, it go to number Absolutely. one. Absolutely. It's got two airplanes now instead of one. Maybe I need to start Absolutely. playing some gospel songs instead of this hip-hop stuff. Follow Tanker. Look Absolutely. what's happening with him. Look at those Destinites. See what they're driving? Yes. Ain't no oil spills in the parking lot over there. Yes. There's Lamborghinis over there. Yes. Come on now. There's two yes. seaters. Come on now. Yes. So that's the way I think. Yes. And, and, and what if, let's just what if, you think big in this season and you brag big on God and you declare uh, and, and in 90 days, 90 days, let's just say nothing happens. You still wasn't robbed of 90 days of because expectation. Because eventually you're going to manifest. You're going to manifest. You're going to manifest. But my point is, if nothing happened, you ain't lost nothing but 90 days of grief. 
You had 90 days of excitement. It's like telling your wife, you, 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 you're taking her to Hawaii next year. And she spent a whole year happy cooking and cleaning <laughs> and, and loving on you. And then when it gets time to go to Hawaii, you can't go. You still ate the steak. <laughs> The, Come on now. And you're going to manifest because it's the law of faith. So even if it doesn't happen on the exact date that you want it to happen, it's going to happen. And it might not happen like you think it's going to happen, but more going to happen because you pushing than didn't you not pushing at all. Absolutely. And sometimes you get way more than you bargained for. According yes. to Ephesians 3 and 20, he says the Lord is able to do more than you can ask Exceedingly. or think anyway. So if, turn to your neighbor and say, if you can think it. If you can think it. And if you can ask it. And if you can ask it. According to heaven. According to heaven. You still ghetto. That's right. That's it. You still thinking too low because That's he said he'll give you more than you more. can ask for Glory to thing. God. Yes. We receive Now listen, it. I think big. Yes. So if he said that he can do more than I can ask to think. Yes. Then that means I should be able to get at least what I do. Yes. Ask or think. Yes. If yes. I, I, I if I just settle for what I think about, yeah. I'll be good. Yeah. He ain't even got to exceed. Yeah. He can use he exceeding on y'all. Yeah. But yes. if I'm able to get what I but he said I can get more, more than, than what I ask or more think. More than that. More I than like that. that package. More than that. I like it. And so what we have to do, you guys, we you guys should be, and, and this is how you know, and you may have to get yourself together. But honestly, you should be so thrilled. You should be so tremendously thrilled. And if you're not thrilled, and if you're not stirred in faith, and you're not excited, then you're not listening to faith enough. This is the perfect time to be a Christian. This is the perfect time. I'm is, so glad I'm this saved. This is the perfect time. Ooh, if I wasn't this saved is our tonight, time. streaming, let me talk to you. <laughs> if I wasn't saved tonight, yes. I'd get saved. Get saved. Like, I would get like, saved like, right like, now. Like we're, we're the ones that are carrying the marvels. Mm -hmm. We're the ones that are carrying the signs. And so you need to go back, maybe start listening to you know, our YouTube from Sunday, the Sunday before, and just keep rehearsing that. Because there's no way with what we're teaching and what God has. Because see, this is what you have to know, that all of this is working together for our good. It's all working together. Guess what? You're going to be more stirred up. You're going to be more on fire. You're going, to, you're, going to, you're going to be ready to seek him. You're going to be ready to obey him. You're just going to be ready to do exactly everything that God has called you to do. Because if you stay close to the fire, it's like the scriptures Dr. Ben was looking at in the beginning. Those trees that are planted by that water, they grow really strong. They have much stronger anchors than the trees that are far from the water. Right? So for those of you that are like, this is your time to press in. This is not time to, you know, just isolate yourself. No, get around other people. That's you guys so can good. encourage each other. Environment is everything. Who you hang around, what you listen to, because it took years for Jewel to turn my eating habits from a rabbit and squirrel and Amandilla eyelids and yellow rice and chitlins and all that stuff we ate back when I was a kid. And um, you, so now I'm more health conscious and I find myself when I'm not around her, where I'm even able to commit food adultery. <laughs> and it, the food adultery is uh, eat something that she would not approve of. I'm able to commit food adultery. I still make righteous food choices because she's not around. Why? It, because I've been around her so long to where I can hear her voice when she say, uh, uh honey, that's not going to be longevity for you. That's not, nope, that's not going to last. Nope, you know, you know. And Marquita's looking at Will and believing God at a high level. <laughs> believing at a high level. She, she lay hands on him. <laughs> but, but it took years and years, but I'm, I wasn't. I'm so proud. I wasn't skinny as a you know pole. A strong wind would blow him into Wilson County. <laughs> Let the boy eat some chitlins. Um, but but what happened was, being being around her all the time, I began to want to please her with my choices. Not just me, but I wanted. I would even call and say, "Baby, look, here's a picture of what I'm eating." I was so proud of myself. So when you spend time with the word, you won't have to uh, think about 
uh, you won't have to think about how God is going to take care of you. You'll be thinking about how you want to take care of him. Mm -hmm. How you want to do what's right and how you mm -hmm. want the grace of God is going to cover you. You don't have to worry about being good. You just do it because you love mm -hmm. God. It's almost that, that same way with giving. Mm -hmm. when, it, when you get in a relationship with mm -hmm. God, you don't have to be prodded to give and you don't have to live in fear that, oh, if I don't tithe, I'm going to be in trouble. No, you don't got to tithe. You get to yes. tithe. Yes. You don't got to give a dime. But you get to give. Yeah. You don't have to come to church. You don't got to come to church. Mm -hmm. You get to come to Bible study. Mm -hmm. And so it's a whole different other life when you go from got to mm -hmm. to get to. Yeah. Amen. That's so Let's good. give God praise for tonight. Yeah, that's good. You got 10 minutes. You want to chat? Yeah. All right. So questions on anything we talked about tonight? Yeah. I'm getting that testimony tonight. Yep. Yes. Yeah. So they yeah. putting together their own world changes yeah. house. Yeah. To to virtual watch it. That's that, awesome. Thank you for sharing that. That's gonna be such an encouragement to her. That's gonna be. Yeah. Yeah. It is. I appreciate you sharing that. I'm going to get that. That's, she's going to love that. Thank you. That's good. Somebody else? Yes. Andrew, can you do the mic again? Yeah, you need a mic. Bam, bam. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things I had to do, like you were saying earlier, is you know what are you listening to? What are you hearing on a consistent basis? And I, I had to even cut off ESPN because even the sports, that's all you heard. And so, you know, I, I like to say CNN stands for constant negative news. And one of the things that's absent from all this forecasting is they never talk about the people that have recovered. Mm -hmm. And I was reading this just on the news, and it says that the majority of the people that have mild symptoms recover in two weeks. Mm -hmm. The ones that have slightly more severe, six weeks, <coughs> eight weeks max, fully recover. But I've never heard them report that on MSNBC, mm -hmm. Fox, or CNN. Mm -hmm. So if you're constantly <coughs> inundated with all these negative reports, you're automatically going to be in fear. I don't care how much word you, you have, mm -hmm. if you are constantly listening to that, it's gonna impact your thinking. Mm -hmm. And before you know it, you're gonna be looking around the corner for a virus. <laughs> you know, you're gonna be looking for, to get sick. So I constantly just have to, really the best thing, just shut it all off. Just cut everything mm -hmm. off. And like you said, turn on the word. Turn on Dr. Dollar, Dr. Ben, or or Bill Winston, something that's going to stir you up, whatever it is, and just constantly listen to that, have that plan, and shut off all that noise because it's not going to stop. Brother Ray, I am so glad that you made that point, uh, and I'll mm -hmm. make this point on Sunday. Uh, if you were to be asked um, what is the result if someone got it, um, that you don't have to be in fear. You're not, nobody's going to get it here, but if somebody asks you, because we are leaders and people want to know information from us, and I talked to uh, an individual from the governor's office today, one of my pilot buddies, and they said that if you were to, 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 to someone was the contractor, what happened is they go to the hospital, and then they, they give them instructions, and they send them home and say, stay in your home for two weeks, isolate yourself into one room, don't even be amongst the other family members. Change your toothbrush every other day. Drink fluids. Uh, um, take the aspirin or whatever they give you uh, and, and t get a lot of rest. And in two weeks, within two weeks, the fever should break. And once you have not had a fever for three days, you're released back into the public and that's it. They don't announce that. 
And so in the minds of the people, that to, to, to get the, 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 the virus means instant death. There's only been a couple hundred deaths, but think about it. The flu, there's 80,000 deaths a year for the flu. America has had 200 deaths, two or 300 deaths from this thing, and they're shutting down the world. It almost makes you think there's some sort of conspiracy, but I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but I'm saying, listen, compared to two things now, 80,000 a year and nobody says anything, but 200 and stop the world? Come on now. But, but, and this is why we really believe it was the plot of the enemy to stop the church. That's really what he was going after. He was coming after kingdom people to stop the, you know, social distance, you know, the social distancing and knowing that the fellowship of believers coming together is so vital in times like this. So it was really just an attack to say, I got to stop them because I believe that we are already in the middle of the greatest rising that the church has ever seen. Some have started to see it already, some has, um, haven't, but it's, all, it's already in operation. And so I think that it was just, you know, Satan and his cohorts saying, what can we do on a global level? Because they are beginning to really take too much ground. And so we know that God is never gonna allow it, it, the enemy to outdo him. And so that's why we can all rest assured that the heavenly host has already been put on assignment to cause great victories. I mean, great break breakthroughs that we haven't even conceived in our thoughts and in our minds and that we've talked about. And we're all on that same page that this was really, this was really not just about the nations as, as much as it was the kingdom in the nations and being able to stop those gatherings because they're not closing the police stations, they're not closing the hospitals. You know what I mean? There's still certain institutions that, that they're not closing. And then some of our you know, um, lineage we've been talking, it's like they're targeting um, particular ones in particular cities. Like, okay, so if we tell you we're gonna go to seven services, no, we still don't want you. So you know it's like, okay, you are just trying to, but that's okay because God is going to get the glory and this online e-member church is going to just cause all kinds of revival and miracles. So really the gospel of Jesus can't be stopped. Can't be stopped. Amen? One last thing too. You also hit on this. This is just listening to you and, and reading a lot. This is the best time. It is. To invest. Oh, yeah. This is the sure. best time to buy. For sure. This is the best time to take advantage of the bottom falling out and getting things at rock bottom Absolutely. prices. And this is where the church can really take advantage, the body, yeah. and take advantage of these, the economics from this because yeah. trust and believe. Warren Buffett and all them other billionaires ain't sitting back doing yeah. nothing. Absolutely. They're buying. Absolutely. <laughs> And you always have to know, if, if people are losing, then there's people that are gaining. They're, they're great gains. It's never just one-sided. Money is circulatory. So if the, if the bottom is falling out somewhere else, then somewhere else is shooting up you know, through the roof. And we're literally experiencing that. And you all will be experiencing that as well, in Jesus' name. Yeah, amen. So we were, you touched on um, make sure you're not fear shaming and faith shaming individuals. And so I work in a predominantly male industry and um, especially with expecting, a lot of people don't expect much from me. So now that everybody's cracking down on everybody being in public, um, my boss came around and was like, well, we're trying to stretch the workout. And, you guys might have to take extra days off. And there's this young guy who just started working with us. And he actually goes to one of the local churches around here. And um, he's like all up in arms like, man, I'm not going to show up to work if I can't make this much money. And I don't know what they expected us to do if we can't come make the money that they said they was going to make. And so like, I'm most of the time I have my music on in my ear. I'm not listening to a lot of what's going on at work. And so like every now and again, I hear him say that. And it's like, 
my my spirit and my flesh are worn with each other because my flesh is like, oh man, he's freaking out. He's creating a panic here because of course reality is setting in for him. But then my spirit is like, well, first of all, you got kids. You've been broke before several times. God has not let you fall in those moments. So why would you listen to that? And so like the other day, like, I just kept hearing him and I, I haven't really been saying much, but then the other day I was finally like, man, that's why you gotta stay in your word because it says that I know what it is to be to live with little and I know what it is to have much and I know how to be content in all circumstances. I'm like, if anybody should be panicking right now, it should be me. So you, I'm a believer that God said he's going to, he's going to rebuke the devour, devourer because I'm a tyrant believer. And I've been through a situation like this before several times. And he didn't let me fall then. I came out yep. of it. So I already had my practice before yep. all y'all went through this. Mm-hmm. I already went through that little mm-hmm. valley. So if it happens again, I'm just going to you know, mm-hmm. buckle up and enjoy the, the ride. I, I don't believe that this two week or three week or whatever is gonna make me fall in my finances because God has always right. helped me up before. Right. And then take it another step and say, I won't ever know lack again. Don't even give yourself an option like, well, if, no, no well if, I'll never be broke another day in my life. I'll never experience lack again. I mean, get a resolve on it because if you leave it open, then the enemy's like, you know, you, you know, he'll play a scripture like that. Well, the word says, I know how to be abound and I know how to base. Yeah, but my basing days are over. <laughs> yeah, that was Paul. Well, Paul can have that. Yeah, he can have that. Mm-hmm. Paul can have that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Amen. And you know, and sometimes when you're, you're faced with a coworker that's constantly saying something, and you may try to encourage them, some folks have a problem for every answer. You know, you cannot talk them into winning. So in that case, you just may want to say something like, you know something, if I had your level of disbelief, I probably would be nervous too. And it makes them go, wait a minute now, I got faith. You sure do. You have to get down there with them (laughs) and show them what they look like in the mirror before they make a change. You say, you know something, if I I had your level of disbelief, I'd be nervous. Yeah, because it's like they want you they want you to be like, you're not being real. Like, no, right, right. my reality is not your reality. My reality is the gospel of Jesus. This is my reality. That's not my reality. So I've created my own reality within the <laughs> word of God. That's why he said my confidence in the word, not necessarily in myself, but my confidence is in the word. So therefore I am confident. So a lot of times you will have people try to argue down like, <laughs> I, I don't really what, feel like they real like that. What no. shut them down though, what shut them down is when you say, okay, <laughs> okay. Like I'm not about to try to convince you. Okay. This is about how my life is <laughs> looking. Three okays and they leave you alone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anybody else? A- Andrew? Hey, Doc, I just want to say this here real quick. And you said this a while back. Actually two things, one for you, one for Dr. Jew. Don't trade what you know for what you don't know. Mm-hmm. You know, if you know what the Word of God says, don't pick up what somebody else, I believe. I've been hearing people say that, man, my kids ain't going to be in school for three weeks. They ain't going to school for the rest of the year. My kids won't go to college now. It's going to be 30 years. You don't know that. <laughs> you heard that from somebody that, that was not a reliable. He was shaking when he told you that. He was probably <laughs> on something, you know? So don't worry about all that. Don't trade what you know, what the Word of God says. What yeah. you don't, don't trade what you've confessed. I'm, I'm, I'm quick, I'm sharp, I'm rich, I'm good looking. For all these symptoms, those are my symptoms right there. Uh, yeah. Those are my symptoms. I'm yeah. quick, I'm rich, I'm good looking, I'm sharp. I'm, yeah. I'm really good looking. You know, so yeah. I, sometimes <laughs> I have to repeat those symptoms to somebody because I'm yeah. not going to take your symptoms. And this last thing, nobody's ever fallen to, this is professionally speaking, nobody's ever really fallen to cancer or heart attack. They fall into the symptoms. They let them symptoms play over and over in their minds, and that's what they fall to. Now, this is for you, Dr. Jew. I watched you. So you ain't going to trade what I know for what I don't know all this other stuff. I watched you a month ago. I heard somebody walk in the room and say, oh, well, if this happens, if this happens, and talk about Mom LeGrain. You immediately, not knowing, went over and spoke different symptoms. I said, wow, she's speaking different symptoms. She's not even agreeing with that. She's different symptoms. Those are the symptoms that Mom LeGrain immediately caught on to. So it doesn't even, you don't even have to be awake. You can repeat that confession that Dr. Ben gives us every Sunday, put it on tape and put it by your bed. Subconsciously, 
that stuff yep. still goes to work in yep. you, and you'd be surprised. You will increase. Your increase will double during this time. Yep. Don't let nobody tell you you can't increase right now. Don't let nobody tell you you can't promote right, right. now. That you cannot. That your storehouse is a, a symptom of a believer. High expectations, not a yep. high fever. High expectations. A symptom yep. of a believer. You're not picking up weight. I'm increasing in size. All of my increase. I'm yep. getting more cars, bigger homes. Yep. I'm getting it all. You know, yep. you just got to be excited. And like you said, bulldog tenacity. Those are things I've seen in the last 30 days from you. That's some things that have been embedded in me that is still there, and I ain't getting up off of it. Yeah. So I'm not about to trade what I know yeah. for what I don't know. You ain't yeah. gonna come up and get me off of that. Yeah. I'm rooted by this river of water, and I'm good. still producing, so. That's good. That's, that's good. good. That's Angela, good. That's very good. Um, so a couple, two years ago, when um, Pastor Marcus said that if God ever stops a service, and calls your name that you need to listen. So that came back to me, and the Lord was like, if I will stop the world for you, for me right. to be able to listen to you, All right. I will stop the world for you to be able to listen. Yeah. And so it, yeah. it kind of changed my perspective. Yeah. What He was like, I'm stopping it so I can help you yeah. get that word that you've been believing God for yeah. all these years. Yeah. The Lord is like, I'm stopping everything. I'm stopping school. For yeah. me, it was like, I'm stopping work mm -hmm. so that you, so I can make sure you get it because I told you, you'll never go without. Mm -hmm. So that's what the Lord. That's did. good. And we know that the virus comes from the enemy, but God in the middle of all of that is saying, now I'm perfecting the church. The three Hebrew boards were in the fire, they, but yeah. Jesus was in there with us. He was in there with he was, And the thing about it, sometimes people are like, but this is a global. He created all the nations. He, create, he created every nation that exists. Mm -hmm. He created China. This is not a surprise to God. This is not a surprise. He created all of them. And he... Right there. He said he will set a table before you. So that the Lord was like, look, don't look at, you got to make sure you have the right perspective based on what you guys were saying tonight. Like, you got to have the symptoms of a believer and not yeah. what what the world is saying. Because if not, you will be like, oh my gosh, everything is so bad, you know. Right. So and at the saying. same time, you are still washing your hands, which is what you should have been Absolutely. doing. You are still buying toilet Absolutely. paper, which you should have been had some toilet paper anyway. Absolutely. You still, still um, making sure you clean behind yourself and you don't let people breathe on you. At the same time, you can be diligent. You can walk in the natural and the supernatural at the, at same, the same time. You don't have to pick between the you two. You don't have to pick between the two. And sometimes people feel like, oh, well, no. If I'm having faith, I still wash my hands. I'm washing my, I'm doubling how much I wash my hands, probably tripling, right? Cleaning, tripling. But I'm still believing those things, like you said, the natural and the supernatural go together. Um, Kelly gave a scripture in Revelations. It was good. Everything that can be shaken is just being shaken. Mm -hmm. So what's happening is, remember, a toothpaste, you don't know what's in the toothpaste until you push it. Right. So, when you're, so what happens is the squeeze and in that squeeze is where the contents like, come out. And the contents, and so people start saying, oh, wow, are we, are we getting together? Is it safe? Is uh, it? Yeah. Because really, you're, it, it's, a, it's an identity. Squeezing is an identifier right. of where's my faith walk. Right. And it's not bad if you say, wow, I had some fear here. Or, wow, I, you know, I had, some, I had some issue here. And that's okay, because all of us have, um, you know, areas we're like, ooh, I just identified, let me build my faith over here. Because maybe I'm feeling really strong here. But I need to build my faith over here. And, then, and that's what these times do, is they're identifiers of where am I and where do I need to be. Right. And, and, and then sometimes God just be looking out for you because you don't have the boldness to do something. He'll do it for you. A lot of folks have been talking about, I've been thinking about leaving my job to work from home. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to quit my job to believe God. Now you got to believe God. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. I call you rich. Yes, yes. I call, I yes. call you abundantly supplied. Yes. I want you to look for supernatural supplied. increase. Don't yes. you set yourself yes. up for struggle. Yes. You start believing yes. for the next level. Yes. You start believing for the 
for the for the, that downwind. Come yes. on now, you be looking for that all that. I mean, it's it's time for a gusher. I'm hearing yes. gusher. gusher. It's a Glory gusher God. coming in your yes. life. Tell your neighbor, say it's a gusher. It's a gusher coming in your life. Coming in your life. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's receive our tithe and our offering tonight. Yes. Woo! Praise God. For now, those who are streaming, how can they serve in the area of they can offering? Do huh? give their, they can do uh, text to give or you can cash app the ministry. The information is right there. Can the streamers screen. read that? Yes, they can. Okay. In case you can't see it, streamers, uh, uh, Money Sign Destiny Center TN would uh, receive your offering. Uh, Money Sign Destiny Center TN on the cash app. And go back to the text to give window, guys. Media. Can you go back to the other window, the text to give window, Brother John? Okay, yeah. So text to give is 615-576-5571. You got to text the word give to that number, G-I-V-E. You want to text the word give to 615-567-5571 in case you can't see that from the streamer's ca um, camera. Everyone else, go ahead and prepare your tithes and your offering. Thank you so much for your faithfulness in this time. Hmm? Cash app is money sign Destiny Center TN. Money sign Destiny Center TN. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm doing a drive-in service at Grace Bay. Everybody jump in the parking lot. That's good. Mm -hmm. That's creative. I love that. All right, once you have your gift prepared, please go ahead and stand. We promise to get you out in one hour on Wednesdays and uh, two hours on Sunday. And we, we give the chest bumps and the bows and hit it, get on out of here. So we're going to get you out of here and you get back to your families. Thanks so much for your faithfulness. Yes, indeed, it won't, won't be, be long, long now. God's, God's decree. decree. Things, Things are going to happen, happen so fast, fast our heads are going to swim. swim. One, One thing fast on the heels of the other. I won't be able to keep, keep up. up. Everything, Everything will be happening, happening at once and, and everywhere I look. look.